Okay. All right. I will call the July 2021 meeting of the Guilford Shellfish Commission okay. uh, to order. Yeah. I'll ask if Peter can share his screen. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we will start with the public forum. I'm not sure there's any members of the public here tonight. I think I hear cricket. Okay, so we will go on to the minutes of the June 23rd, 2021 meeting. Just let me make one note today, I think is July 14th, uh, not July 13th. So I will amend the, this agenda, agenda accordingly. Agenda, yeah, correct, that's good. Yeah. Do we have to wait while you do that or should we continue? Oh, no, please continue. Okay. So did anybody have any adjustments, changes, comments on the minutes from June 23? I read the minutes and they seem fine to me. Okay. I'll make a motion we accept the minutes as, uh, as presented. It's Peter, I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, commercial activity and licenses. I uh, So I do not have any commercial uh, license sales to report this month. I uh, can uh, report on um, recreational licenses, but I think that subcommittee's further down. Peter, can you meet Monday to review the commercial stuff with me? I should. Um, That's my only day. Yeah, let me let me cycle back. We'll find the time. I just okay. have to, I don't have my uh, business schedule in front of me right now. Ed. Okay. Okay. Uh, bills and correspondence. So uh, I do have some bills to report for the month. Judy Castellano, Secretarial Services, $73. Fred Hill, Warden Fees, $200. Alan Brown, Warden Fees, $600. Schweitzer, Trash on Trolley Road, $159. Bob Berger, Water Sampling, $64.96. Was the $600 to Alan? Yeah. How does that... Uh... Never mind. That's 15 runs. Let me call it up for you. Am I math right? Uh, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be correct. 15. I, at first, I wasn't thinking 40 went into 600, right? From my yeah, 15. Okay. I've been in the fog all day. <laughs> right. Well, literally. Do that too. Literally in the fog all day. That's when I do my best work. <laughs> okay. I didn't actually add this up yet, so if I may. Uh, total is $1,096.96. Okay. Motion to accept the bills as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we just, when we do the uh, motions and seconds, can we just make sure we say our name also for Miss Judy? Just to make sure she gets the right names with them. Okay. okay. Is that necessary? I mean, do we need, it hasn't been that way in the past. I'm just wondering. Is that a new requirement? No, there were a couple meetings where she was it's asked hard. for it. It's, it's hard sometimes for me to hear. And when um, I don't really know, I can I can guess who you are, but I'm not seeing all of you at once. Okay. All right. Okay. We've okay. done it at some meetings and not, I just thought of it as it popped up there. Sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. And I don't mean to bust your chops about it. Oh, oh I know. I'm good. <laughs> Okay. Uh, did anybody have any correspondence? I just had that one thing that I got from Steve Goldschmidt about the guy with the license replacement. 
which I sent out to them. Um, and I, and I, that'll probably come up later in the, in the meeting as to changes that have been made to the website. But uh, his, uh, his license was sent to him. Okay. Any other correspondence or? We do have the correspondence from Zach Gordon. Perhaps we'll discuss that later in the uh, agenda. Yes. Okay, good. Very good. Excuse me, was that a letter or email from Zach? It was an email. All right, so we should record that under correspondence. Okay, uh, we re received a, an email from, actually, I think from Mike Gordon uh, regarding the uh, submitting a comment sheet to the State Board of Aquaculture on the kelp farm. And since he proposed it back in April, I think, uh, there had been like three or four changes to the location based on marine fisheries and then Army Corps of Engineers. And he was looking for our final comment section on that. Did we get a final uh, decision as to his exact location? Has he has he given us a you know an exact spot as of this time? Yeah, the last I think you should have been on the email the other day. Okay, that had so, the map in there. It's actually in state waters. Right, and so that's it. That's that's where he, that's where he wants his his plot. Yes, and that's okay. Where's... Yeah, his this last submission actually, if, if I understood from my research, I spent about four hours combing through it, in addition to what you said, combing through the state and Yukon websites. And it turns out like the actual only submission that mattered is the one that he just submitted, which is the LWRD license application. It's a pre-submission, which is required for consultation with shellfish commissions as applicable. Uh, that's the plot that's in state waters. Uh, it had also gone to Harbor Management, which um, approved uh, it not being uh, impactful to at least the scope of the Harbor Management Commission. So it's now come before us. We either basically say it's not impactful to shellfish or we, we comment that it, it is. Uh, that Those are our two options with that process. Okay. Thanks for that. Do we want to discuss if we're just... Would we sign off on it now or um if unless somebody wants to bring it up later we should might as well just talk about it now we're, we're three quarters of yeah all right yeah I, I see no reason not to sign off on this one no it should be fine don't it, it want should it be to okay get, i don't want it to get into a thing where these aquaculture permits come in and we just kind of pass them through and stamp them because the time is going to come when they're above uh, town jurisdiction shellfish beds and by signing off on it and saying we don't have an issue it will basically be giving our jurisdiction over those grounds away because they we don't have water rights and they're going to be working the water above them which is prohibitive to shell fishing under them and therefore technically if you, you know go down the line if somebody wanted to lease that in the future it's not workable grounds because there's gear above it right and, and, and no. so the so this document on um, the second page has the section that we complete it's the shellfish commission determination uh and and we can state that the work um will not adversely impact the shellfish area or we can check and provide comment that the um, the work will adversely impact the shellfish area and then provide a summary of the shellfish commission's project specific concerns, comments, along with our signature. So we do have the option right. to a conflict or concern. Yeah. Uh, state ultimately right. makes that call. Right, I just wanna make sure that gets used. Uh, I think is, you know, maybe like on moorings or something, we just kind of turn into a stamping authority at some point. I, yeah, I, I've been trying, I've been trying to, I look at every one of those on Harbor Management. So, so, um, to try to see where it may overlap. The issue I'm having right now is uh, I don't have a single um, 
GIS view of everything to help me with that. But right. I, you know, I'm just, it's something that could come up and yep. that. And, and I completely agree that we shouldn't just rubber stamp these and send them down the road. But in, in this instance, if it's outside, uh, you know, the conditional waters that jurisdiction over, then we might as well just let them proceed. They, you know, they're, they're yeah. uh, fully free to, to, you know, pursue their permit. Okay. And, in, and I agree with your point wholeheartedly. It would be helpful for our, us as a commission to have a position where there is um, a potential adverse impact, either, you know, it's, it's over a, um, a shellfish nice. area we're responsible for, or, or even more specifically, a licensed shellfish area that, that we have some, you know, established policy that we've communicated that, you know, we will, these will be our concerns. If it's already licensed, we can actually, I believe, deny it and stop it. If it's a potential licensee, that's a different story, you know. But we couldn't have somebody come in on Chris Walston's bed and put a kelp farm up. He would come to us and sue us for a refund because he couldn't work those mm -hmm. grounds anymore. Kind of thing. Yeah, that that that's probably we, we probably want to get clarity on that. I'm I'm just I was researching all over and. Simply everything I've said that the state has total decision rights over kelp farming regardless. We, we really can provide comment on an adverse impact, but we can't block. So we probably do need that clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the state doesn't want to give it. I've asked for it. Yeah. They basically yeah. want to say, oh, it'll never happen. If it happens, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And yeah. Everything I think you know, ninety-five you know, percent of the time, I think the reality is going to be there'll be an amenable discussion and a relocation of the kelp farming proposal to an area that's less uh, impactful, right? And Shannon Kelly, that works on these applications with the applicant, is aware of that potential, and yep. she can advise, you know, yep. the applicant to say that's not right up front. She should be able to tell them that's not. A smart area or a correct area. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. So. Yeah. So let's not make a, a mountain out of a molehill yeah, on this exactly. one. This one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Right. So you know, if I if I may, I propose that we um, we determine that the proposed work by the Gordons um, per the submitted uh, pre-submission consultation form will not adversely impact the shellfish area. Uh, and, and signs that um, any comment you wish to add, please do. And we send that back to them. Okay. Is that something like an electronic signature or do I have to print it out? Jeez, I'm assuming you can use, um, you know, PDF um, okay. editing capability on this document. Okay. Is this something we should vote on? I, I just proposed. Oh, so that was a motion? Yep. That we say there's I, no adverse effect and sign off on it. I second that motion. That was Bob Berger or Peter making the motion. Bob Berger seconding it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All aye. Greg. Okay. Let's move on to Warden's report. Is the uh, senior warden here? Alan is not. Okay. Fred, do you want to talk, speak about what's been going on? Sure. I'll, uh, my last submitted report, uh, 68 shell fishermen contact and one violation. Person had uh, two guests. They had just started, so they agreed to have the third person wait on shore and watch the operation. Uh, one resident senior permit sold, and I'll forward that to uh, Commissioner Charland. And that's pretty much it. I've seen actually uh, been impressed with the number of folks that I dealt with, a lot of compliance with the rules and laws. Other than that. Super, that's great to hear. Have you seen any areas that are, you think getting used a lot more versus Trolley Road or is it mostly still Trolley Road? 
Yeah, it's still Trolley Road. Okay. Yeah. You know, one particular day, it was 39 and zero at any other location. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, correction on that, 33 and uh, just one or two at the other locations. That's still, gigantic, yeah. you know, hugely disproportionate. Yep. Um, the only time I see them really pushed to the other areas is when we have the closure and, and you see them over at Shell Beach. All right. Well, thank you for that. Any other concerns, issues you want to bring up? No. Nope. Doing well. And that we will move to subcommittees. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And Thanks. And subcommittees, and we'll start with recreation. I can report on recreation license sales if that would be appropriate. Uh, yes. You can do it so, here or do receivables. Under yeah. finance. Either way. Yeah, we, probably worth in the future clarifying because we either do it here or we do it in uh, licenses or we do it in finance. It's kind of moved around over the years, but I'll do it here. Okay. Um, so, um, Recreational licenses for the month, uh, Captain Morgan, $3,264 by check, 29 non-res, 15 non-res senior, nine res, four res senior. Uh, I'll comment, um, I was over there picking up licenses late this afternoon. Uh, there's um, general interest, you know, about the closures and whether we're gonna be open on the weekend, so I, I Told them I, I thought it was either going to be by the weekend or early next week, you know, and uh, Bob's optimistic we'll get cleared by Friday. Yes. He, also, he also asked about the status of stocking. Um, good news, though I explained we still have had the challenge getting stocking um, sources, but he said um, he talks to people regularly and people are still going out and they're getting clams. He's heard no complaints about um, the lack of clams from people that have been out there. So, you know, I reinforce that we're really trying to get the stock. We, we have the budget and anxious to do so. And, but it's good in the meantime that there's still clams out there. Um, and it, um, I've, been, I've been going and doing fine. My people in my family have too. Probably what you know, a note for future stocking, we probably want to get a fair amount of um, seedlings and, and young clams uh, to re rebuild the base when the opportunity presents itself. Um, we also had a couple of replacements, $5 um, each, so $10 total in replacements. So we had a total uh, receivables of 3274 uh, I also went by town hall and I'm happy to report, you know, healthy sales there. The month of May, we had $2,225 in sales. The month of June, $3,560. I've twice had to go and replenish their licenses uh, because they've had such robust sales. That's good. Yep. Yeah. Peter, can I just add that um, I was supposed to go to D's today and get them, and uh, Pete, the the, the uh, owner, wasn't at the shop. I'm going to get them tomorrow. Um, that's going to be a substantial amount because I haven't gotten licenses from them. Um, I didn't get them last month either, so it, it's it's going to be a substantial amount. So we'll we'll plan that for August submission. If um is is it okay if I bring it to you to to bring to town hall or whatever because it's going to be a good deal of cash I really don't well, want you, it. No, you can you can bring it to me. And I have I have the fishing factory licenses. Don't include those in the receivables because they were um, noted in last month's meeting. I still haven't gotten those to you yet. The ones from the fishing factory. Yeah, just remind me when you deliver those. Okay. Thanks, man. Peter, I have two hundred dollars worth of. Uh worth of uh, between checks and some cash to get to you as well. Thanks, Mike. I'll, I'll also put that in August then. Um, it, it off to you. Do we have a year yeah. end up at the end of this month or was that last month? So we had, we had a preliminary for June, which did, because we had to reschedule our June meeting, it, it was not, um, 
it's not the final submission. Uh, so my sense, I reported on it at the last meeting, Bob. So I, I have to really wait for the getting all that um, back from finance to see what the final numbers in June look like. But I do know uh, with certainty we're under budget for the year. So we still carry over a significant amount of money. And there was of that about 6,000 in stocking that we didn't spend that we had right. allocated. Okay. So, you know, if just on that note, when we get the stocking, anything we can find that's worth buying. Um, if it's more than six, we're carrying over six from last year. Um, so let's overspend. Right. It's now's the time. Yep. All right. Uh, we'll move down to B, water sampling. Uh, water sampling uh, was completed this afternoon, actually, to get us reopened after the heavy rains last week from the tropical storms. Mike Bowen and I were out in uh, re really beautiful conditions. I have to say it was a spectacular day on the water. Um, Mike uh, is getting more and more familiar with the, with the boat and the route, which is great. Um, we are, we just did water samples today to get reopened. Um, if you remember from last month, we had a, a single area closure due to isolated bacteria problems at Chaffinch Island. Mm -hmm. They want meat samples for that area. So regardless of how good the water samples are there, I don't think we're going to get reopened to Chaffinch Island. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem for you know, for in terms of you know keeping people um, busy and keeping them, you know, giving them places to go and, and get clamps, but uh, that area will still likely remain closed. Can is there a time they can take meat samples or? Uh, I think they'll take them whenever we can get, you know, within the same time frames. You know, that they as long as they have a twenty-four hour turnaround, um, they'll take them. It's just a matter of being able to go out and dig them up. Um, so maybe my, my next day to be able to do that would probably be Monday. Um, but again, that's, that I'm, is, I'm pretty Monday also. It's a significantly bigger undertaking than just going to get water samples. As of now, my I'm free Monday. All right. So maybe that'll be our day. Okay. All right. Yeah. We put that down tentative and. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, to the boat. Oh, let me, um, one more note on the water sampling. Uh, we had been trying to do it last week and there was one day we didn't hear back, Bob and didn't hear back from the state in time that day to get out. And then there was that looming forecast in two days of inches and inches of rain and the weather was iffy and we didn't want to just kind of go out and get beat up with the for weather forecast, which is why yeah. they run promptly and the yeah, open there, from Saturday. No, no open. point getting open just to be closed again. Right. So we made the executive decision to undo that sampling from last week and do it this week. Just so everybody's aware of what went on and why we didn't get them sooner and all that. It would have been pointless, basically, waste of time and effort. Okay, now onto the boat. Um, from my perspective, the boat is good. Uh, it's a, there's some algae growing in it from all the rain that we've had, but uh, the boat is okay. We've not had, we need to have the problems with the throttle being a little touchy. In fact, my boat is okay. Uh, really, uh, really, really, difficult to control the boat at times, especially in tight quarters, getting into the dock. Um, but, uh, and I, I texted and tried calling Paul Nelson without any response. I don't know what else. John, have you, have you had any contact with Nelson besides what we talked about? In there? I talked to him and he said that he would uh, meet someone down there the following week. I, te I texted a couple of people and I, and I don't know if anybody, I know, I know, I know people, you just said you reached out. I mean, I spoke to him in person. Right. You mind trying to contact him again? See if he can get, you know, sort of revisit the problem because 
he has not refined the meatball, and maybe he'll know who it is at tech, whatever. But uh, I'll try again. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't know that that was a was an issue. I would have. You know. uh, it's still, still ongoing. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to stocking. Uh, I, that was, is, stocking is uh, lacking. <laughs> so I've but, reached out to Patty about the oysters a couple times, and I don't know. I've had some technology issues. I, I got had accounts that got hacked. They actually bought all these great iPhones on my Verizon account and then shut my and my wife's phone off at some point and stuff. So we've been going through frauds. I don't know if she just didn't get them or what. I don't know if John Hall might have. Had you contacted Patty in the past, John? From uh, Bloom Shellfish? Yes. Uh, yeah, a long time ago, Ed. I don't know if I still have her number. Let me look. All right. If you do, could you maybe try it too? I don't know if stuff is getting sent. I don't know. I'm going to go live off the of does Chris, Chris Walson doesn't have anything available? He's gone like MIA. He, he's like, I think he's still getting his uh, equipment in the water. Yeah, he hasn't started his season yet, basically. Yeah, I, I, I understand he's having some you know, family issues or personal issues. But he is, he is not fishing at this time. Oh. Hey, I, have, I have Patty King's number from, uh, she's, I, I said Bloom, she's with Dolan. Is what I have here. I don't know. Well, no one's owned by Bloom now. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. What? What? Are, what exactly? Are we, what, what am I? What am I going to be asking for? Anything? Uh, normally, top? We, normally, we did like twenty five hundred dollars worth of oysters somewhere. Bottom run. Okay. Out of curiosity, yet, is that going to be an issue with the with the water temperature? Because we usually do it in the spring. No, I think it's just a convenience in the spring. Unless okay. An issue with it there. Okay, I'll call her. Uh, um, I'll call her tomorrow morning. Okay. Right. And and we have also allocated six thousand. So we normally go for twenty five hundred. Yeah, um, we, we, we couldn't get more than that from her. If she has it. Yeah. Ella, Ella, we have we have six thousand dollars to spend, and um, hopefully she has something to sell us. So, okay. but, you know, just by way of comment, we, we probably have more than the 6,000. Uh, you know, we want to get a fair allocation of oysters and round clams. And and then also, you know, back on the fall so we can do some, you know, late fall stocking. Well, part of that other 6,000, we had talked to Stellamar, Steve Schaefer. And I sp spoke with him today. Uh, he has whatever we need or want. Good. Uh, oh. He can do it. There's two ways. He actually has boats up working the West River right now, stirring it up to see what actually set from all their work they did last year, all the shelling they did last year. He's seeing what set this spring. Uh, and he was feeling there was enough product there. We could do almost okay. a direct relay from there. Or if we still wanted the nice cup harvested oysters from his stuff, he would bring them up from Greenwich for us. And he, all right. You can do that within the week. All right. So why don't we leave it that if we'll see what Patty has at Dolan. And then, you know, if she has whatever leftover she has or doesn't have, then uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll send the rest of the remainder to whatever Steve Shaver has. Okay. And Steve has, I mean, like I said, the West River, I don't know how many days he's going to be up here working it. They were stirring it up and they, did better than he was expecting or it's been very productive that's they, great so i don't know if that's you know how much how long we can wait on the yes product or not. Okay. so john you're gonna call patty tomorrow yeah i put a reminder in my phone to call her at 8 15 when i get into work and then i'll uh um i'll just send a text to everybody um if i touch base with her excellent good thank you Whose dog is? Is that your friend? Is that your dog? Yeah, you can mute me if you. Need. All right. So we let's... muted your friend. Sorry. <laughs> and John, also, when you speak to Patty, see if she might have any Quahog product. I'll ask her that. Well, 
I know sometimes she hasn't had little necks, but she's had cherry stones. But if we're trying to get something, I mean, yep. Yeah. It'd be yeah. nice to be able to do both in one day. Right. Damn right. As long as she has a refrigerated truck and not the open box truck when it's 95 degrees. Yeah, right. But, uh, okay. Good. So let's move on to finance. So I don't have any uh, updated reports since the last meeting from uh, town hall. Okay. Then we will move on to special projects. Okay, Peter, I guess you can show that PDF file up for him. This is, I, I, took a, uh, I took a walk over at Chatfish Island Park along the beach area to uh, see, see what was going about, maybe possibly bumping up those uh, elevated bacteria counts we were getting. Uh, I noticed the tide was about a half station when I was out there July 1st, 2021. Many fiddler crabs are in the area with uh, burrows on the beach area. Heavy foot traffic with a lot of pr presence of dog tracks all over the place. So a lot of people walking their dogs down there on the whole area. They're probably not picking up after them. That's to, to leaving their stuff behind. Salt marsh is highly eroded. The ponds of standing water between hammocks and spartinas and salt marsh grass. Shore area appears to be eroded in many crab burrows all up and down the beach. There's a lot more than were maybe 20 years ago when I was out there. These portions of the beach was eroded to the salt marsh from the past storms, Irene and uh, Sandy. Many seagulls were present in the marsh at the time. Uh, noticing the erosion on the beach, I went to the G town GIS uh, maps. You can bring those up, Peter. This is... Uh, 2005, this shows you the area. Uh, the light area is the beach area. Okay, put up the second one. This is a present one, is, it was 2019. You notice the beach area shifted, uh, shifted up quite a bit. Go to uh, sheet number three. You can see the orange, that was the 2005 beach line. The yellow is now the 2019 beach line. It's, it's showing a shift of 100, 100 feet to the northwest. So actually we're eroding its uh, sea level coming up. It's cutting into the salt marsh in the back there. You can see you can, when you compare the two coming across. Uh, sheet number four. Uh, four areas, four, you can see how wide the beach is now. It's not as, as skinny little piece that was in 2005. This is a 2019 photograph. Uh, sheet number five. These are contours that were done in 2016. You can see the erosion points um, to the salt marsh into there. Those are spots where the water ponds. Now, when those ponds get flushed out, when the tide gets extra high, it flushes them out. The bacteria has a chance to uh, cook in there for about a week or so before those ponds get flushed out with a, with a, with a spring tide coming through. That can, that can every once in a while, it'll give intermittent uh, jumps in the bacteria for sampling. All right, last sheet, number six. These are areas I'd like to see. You can look out the the drainage areas are not. It's kind of fading, you know, faded on this, but the drainage areas are not draining anymore. There's still the water's just ponding behind there anytime a, a big tide comes through. If you go back to the last narrative on page two, uh, the summary is uh, Bay has changed significantly after the storm of Irene and Sandy. Areas of ponding water have increased, which can serve as areas of high bacteria growth. Between times of extra high tides, which can flush the ponding water in a bay, increasing bacteria counts when sampling. High foot traffic with the dogs will increase bacteria load by in the bay area. Recent heavy rains have increased runoff from adjacent properties with the 4.2 uh, inch rain we had last, last week. Birds, deer, and coyotes are intermittently increased. There's quite a few coyotes I've seen run through that area too. Adjustments may be required in the sampling uh, procedures in the future. That's what I've observed. Uh, that was just maybe a couple hours of walking around out there. But uh, I get copies of this to you guys if you need it. I can send, they got in a PDF file. I'll send it off to you. Okay. So do we want to maybe post signs there to ask people to pick up after their dogs? There it, might be, it might be a good suggestion. Yeah, to pick up after dogs. There's quite a few, quite a few uh, 
it's really heavy traffic. I think a lot of people walk their dogs there. They don't go shell fishing, but they go there and walk their dogs quite a bit. Exactly. I, think they, I think they have uh, dog cleanup bags there at the station. Yeah, yeah. No, they don't. They were gone. Oh. They were gone. They used to. When, uh, when, um, they used to. When the COVID the day I was there, there was nothing there. We, took our we had some people, we had some out of state people from uh, New York who were kayaking in the area too. So they probably just ignore everything and just go, you know, and dump all the waste what they want to do, you know. So where, where, what is the, uh, what's the responsibility for that area? Is that state or is that town? No, um, no, it's ours. So it's, uh, it's a town, Park and Rec. It's Park and Rec. So should we, you know, share these findings with Park and Rec um, and see if Rick I think so. Yeah, it might, it might be a good yeah. idea. Yeah, just I want to share with you guys first, you know, before I go I talked to Rick Maynard and show him about it. Like the guy, they put a few more picnic tables out there too, and it's uh, like there are no facilities out there either. Although they do have one facility, they had one outhouse out there. Now, if some of the people don't want to bother going to the outhouse, they might just uh, discharge on the beach, whatever you know. Discharge, yes. Yeah, and I would confirm there's no dog bags there. Yeah. Yeah, there's no dog bags. There was no, no the day I was there. That was the first of July. There were no dog bags there. Well, okay. well I'd, I'd like to confirm that before we go saying right. that okay. the town has been very good about putting those up at parks like that. Right. Does somebody want to take the, take the lead and to go to talk to Rick Maynard about that? I could, I could get a hold of him during the week. I'll be up uh, probably in the office tomorrow. I think we we'll walk over here making an appointment. We're making an appointment with him to see him. Right. I'll show him what I found uh, with the stuff, you. you know, up in those areas. They got trails running through the uh, areas, through the beach areas, through there, and there's all, all sorts of footprints and dog prints up there. Yeah, I mean, Mike and I were doing samples today, and they were there were people sort of camped out on that rocky point. Yeah, right. In Cove with a with a dog running around. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm curiosity when there's dredging done, is that an opportunity to fill those ponding areas? No, no. Is that too because many the dredging is somehow contaminated? I think they have to have designated sort of deposit areas. They do, yeah. There's not too many of them around. There's only a couple spots in the state where you can dump uh, dredging yeah, more, material. More broadly, my question is whether there's a, a means by which um, reasonably those ponding areas could be um, filled per code to reduce the level, the risk of the bacteria forming. Yeah, it's like a Probably track. Have to, you have to get some sort of money, money would have to be involved. Oh, no, that's why I jumped to whether yeah. you could just put fill there. Um, yeah, that, that'd be a problem. That'd, that'd take a lot of, uh, it'd be a cost in, first to study and then secondly to yeah. put the fill in. It's, uh, and, uh, essentially, there's only two places I think in the state we could dump stuff from fill from. Uh, well, maybe uh, not still, though, John, just the, the notion in general of uh, uh, attending to the uh, these po the ponding that's forming so it doesn't, um, it can be mitigated and, and certainly not increase. Yeah, but it, it turns into wetlands and any anything that has to be put there has to be tested on a crazy amount it has of levels. To be tested it, before it puts in, that's all. It's, it's, it's expensive. I'd say, it, say it's it, very expensive. I guess what I'm, where I'm going on this is that we're not the regulatory body to make the decision, whoever it Correct. is. You should certainly share this. Probably it would be a state, state or, decision. It would be a state yeah. decision whether they want to restore the salt marsh to yeah. its uh, present. It was, the, the, this, the damage was done during Irene and Sandy. You can see that. Yeah. You, you see the sh he shifted 100 feet to the northeast, northwest, excuse me. Uh, yeah. It's up to the state if they uh, want to re, you know, re, uh, re uh, up the uh, salt marsh again, you know. Well, is there is there somebody at a DEP that we could call and just ask to see if there's someone we can go. You, you could ask, yeah, we could ask and see. Uh, you can go see Grant too. So maybe they might have some might have some grant money kicking around. You never know. Uh, and regardless of cost, just about the plausibility of just doing some sort of replenishment. Yeah. Yep. All right. Maybe we should. It might be tough because with, with COVID going around still. They're, they're really, uh, I know they wreck havoc with the health department just with uh, COVID enough. So they're, they're probably still still focused on that rather than doing any kind of uh, uh, reconstitution of any uh, salt marshes. But it's probably worth, John, with this, this is good data. It's worth, let, let's figure out, maybe keep it on the right. agenda and um, right. let's figure out how we share this information because if we start 
making right. it visible, whatever time it might take to get considered, at least we've started the clock. Whether it's an outcome Yeah, they've or not. started some stuff at, at the Guilford Yacht Club. They're doing some stuff with reconstruction of Salt Marsh over there. They have gone through quite quite a few loops for doing it. They have UConn working on it over there. So if we get a school involved or something, they could uh, you know, restore some of this area. Yeah, but I don't think the Yacht Club's done anything because they came out and proposed doing it all the way out to Chaffinch Park, Chittenden Park on the other side. They haven't gone through with any of that. And that's no, been no, they're still years now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll pass the information along to Rick and I'll see what happens. I'll yeah. pass along to DEP to see what happens. I'll pass the information along. Just yeah, wanted to let you guys take a look at it first. No, I think that's a great place to start. Yeah. Thank uh, you, in okay. okay. Thank you for that. Do we have any other special projects? Uh, that's all I have for today. I, I have one I, I'll raise. I started the ball rolling with uh, first uh, town IT and then went over to the fire department that apparently is responsible for town communications uh, to look at our recorded announcement. Uh, workflow and device and so that's that's in process ideally we will get a cloud-based um, recorded announcement that we can change uh, by phone remotely and I'm trying to find out ideally it would allow multiple concurrent uh, calls being answered so that's that's in process I should be able to report more at the next meeting okay you're working with Mike Shove on that working with Charlie who's the Commissioner and his IT guy. I think Mike Scholl was in the copy on that. Okay. Now Mike Scholl is usually pretty responsive. Yeah, no, they, they, they've been good. They got a bunch of stuff going on, but they've been good. Excellent. Yeah, that'll be a big improvement. Yeah, they came over to my house at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> That's a different kind of response. Well, they had things going on, they said. Peter said so. I can vouch for that. They're very responsive. Yep. Okay. Signs. Uh, signs is sort of a shared responsibility at this point. Um, we are closed in all areas. Um, I think everybody has been doing uh, actually really great in terms of uh, being responsive and cooperative. The one thing that I did note today with that with Mike is that uh, as we headed into Shell Beach, to do the sampling, there's a sign, sort of like a, a conditional area sign on the rocks, just to the probably two or three houses down from Greg Marsh's house, where the sign is laying over on its side. Um, I don't know how we get in there to fix that. Um, you know, it's like, it's almost like that one that was at Chaffinch Island uh, where Tony Delusia wanted to fix, but we were able to sort of just stand that one up and, and, and correct it. But I don't know how to get to this one without from the water face from the water facing Greg's house. Is it to the right or to the north or to the left? It would be to the right, sort of out towards that point, towards the swimming beach. Which is, uh, we can just walk out there and try and fix it if we can, or see. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a big rocky point that sort of past where the person's you know lawn yeah, ends. Well, else uh, so it, it, it's probably on tri on public property mm -hmm. i just don't it's all have, so that whole area know. there is actually owned by the leets and the houses are owned by the house owners lease technically lease the property from the leases that's true yeah so we can oh. we can use greg's property or i can i'm sure i can get permission so once you you can walk on any you can walk right up to somebody's house there's no non-public space Oh, really? But it's private as in the Leap Association space. Okay. Kind of like the condo association. Okay. Yeah, uh, I just noticed it today when we were out driving around. Um, mm -hmm. that it was like, you know, it's like sort of those red and white signs, additional areas. Just, it's just laying over on its side. Maybe Monday, if we do those meat samples, we could run over there too. Okay. Yeah. We can have a big field trip. All right. We'll do it all. But everything else, in terms of the signs, everything, we're closed everywhere and uniformly closed. And we're in good shape. 
and hopefully for Saturday morning or Sunday morning, we will get a notice that some or all areas get to reopen. Uh, it should be Friday, midday Friday, hopefully. Uh, I just think it with the eighth day, I think it'll go into Saturday is the actual eighth day. Oh, okay. You, you have to have the full week. So it opens on the eighth day, which would be Saturday morning. So if we got notice Friday, we can be ready for Saturday. Okay. I'll, if, if I don't hear from them Friday, I'll contact them before the end of the business day to, to, to clarify. Great. Thank you. Okay. Website. I know Peter has some updates. Yeah, a couple of things. So we had the, uh, the, there was a form on our website about um, re license replacements that had Stephen Goldschmidt's name on it. Uh, so that's now, um, I don't know who actually updated the, do the, the document, but it's now my name. I've already had one person reach me and provided a replacement license. As, as I looked at our links on our website, I quickly realized many of the, the links um, were broken or were not updated. So I went through all of them with Tracy. And so everything now, all of the items on our website that are references and taking you to content or other websites, either state or deep are now updated and working correctly. So that was a uh, kind of a, a good little project to get everything functioning. All right, thank you for going through that. No, that was that was good. I just didn't realize that it a lot of that stuff was ancient. Some of it was six, seven years old. And like last summer, I was getting some of the re, uh, replacements, but I think the town hall had a hard copy they were handing out to people. I think the hard copy had a current name on it. Not Steven, so I think that's where there was some disconnect there. But. Yeah. So, so Steven's enjoyment or happiness, he's not on there anymore. So the other part on website is, um, can we get we still get likes um, and views on our Facebook page, which is good. We've not put any new or recent content on there. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do once going back to that. Um, recorded announcement. I do have that as a link uh, from our Facebook page. So if someone on their phone can click on that and basically then call the, the Shellfish hotline. Um, but it, what I'd like to do is find more ways to make the Facebook page somewhat interactive. So uh, in addition to pictures, you know, if you guys are going out doing sampling or you're, or we're doing any stocking, take pictures so we can get them on the on the Facebook page. Maybe Mike and Bob can go like Facebook Live when they're doing the samples. Get the yeah. wind blowing in their hair and- All right, the commission, commission needs to buy me a GoPro and then I'll go do that. <laughs> I'll come out and go now. I'll come out and I'll be the uh, videographer. Okay, great. I'll wear my Speedo. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, maybe not. <laughs> Judy, you love our commission, don't you? Okay, let's go to up, updates. Quickly. <laughs> no, um, Judy. Land Acquisition Commission. Uh, we haven't had a meeting since uh, May, so we're gonna, probably our next meeting is gonna be in August, so there's really been uh, no activity. Okay, I'll just kind of throw this out there for everybody, but under land acquisition, you know, the one parking area we have kind of partial, partway up trolley road in front of Alan Brown's house that was bought for the town by the shellfish commission with funds from the shellfish commission uh, passed back before any of us were on it. Uh, so if we ever kind of come across or hear something like maybe a neighbor selling a house or somebody knows something, we do have a large reserve and if we could ever gains parking at any of our areas, you know, that might be something to consider spending some of that reserve on uh, just to continue access to these areas and parking areas. Just kind of a is thought that, growing out there. Is that marked off somehow so we know where our, you know, our plot kind of open starts and stops? It's on the survey map and this says private 
in public kind of on either end of that little parking area right by Allen's house. Because the house immediately to the, I guess it's the west, but if you're going down Charlie Road, the house there is for sale. Exactly. But it's for sale for $1.1 million. Right. And I don't know, they originally purchased the other half of that parking area. So is that some, you know, I don't know how to approach them on that. Like, hey, sell your house. Could we do a simultaneous purchase for these parking areas and they don't go with the house? I don't even know if they'd be open for that, but hey, if we could get four more spots up there, what's it worth? And, you know, we have reserve in there. It's right. just thought. That's how the original four spots across from Allen's were obtained. It just somebody said, hey, why can't we do this? Or can we do this? And so just a thought. If anybody hears anything, knows anything, can research it. John on land acquisition, I don't know, you know, if you could. And that, they wouldn't, I don't think they'd be going for something like that. I have a feeling they wouldn't be. They wouldn't be. Or, the town could use the town could use in, in big pieces, not small pieces like that. They don't go for small pieces. Yeah, but the town we're expensive. Expensive. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that parking area is tied to the house. It's tied to the property of that house. John, and I know my, we got half of it. Gold, Why not try? It? Gold, right? Yeah, they, they they probably would not give it up because it's part of the, the one million dollar tax we'll on the house. Right at that. We don't know. have that parking. Area. Okay, we don't know. Let's move on to C Grant. Uh, I have no 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 correspondence at all from C Grant. Okay, Harbor Management, Peter. The only item I have on that is uh, the Harbor Management had approved the uh, Gordon uh, pre-submission, which I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, uh, no, nothing earth shattering to report. Docks, moorings, and other potentially impacting projects. No, none except for the, the stuff for the observations I had at Chatfish Island. That's all. Yeah, I'll make an, a, met, a note that the guy at Jacobs Beach who had that long pier has finally put a float and a dock in the water. Not that that really impacts us, but it's it's finally in in place. Okay. 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 Our old business, our friendly shellfish management plan. Still waiting on the state. We send out a monthly reminder to Alyssa and. She says, keep reminding me, I'll work on it. That's oh. all I have on that. All right. Uh, I, I have kind of correspondence with her fairly regularly. I'll, I'll prod her again and see okay. where we stand. OK. Uh, new business, A, we actually already did. I didn't get taken off this agenda. So we'll move on to B, the RFP process. So just one question on that, on A, if I may add. Um, we, we talked about a subcommittee uh, to you know establish some documented policies on commercial licensing, the whole matter on kelp. And so we've got, I suggested ultimately we do have something on our website to refer people to so we don't go through what we've gone through over the preceding months with people interested in doing kelp farming or maybe kelp in commercial shell fishing and we get barraged with all this request for information and we just need to point them to something and, and let them follow procedure. Okay, that's kind of item B. Uh, oh, so that's what you call our fee, thank you. Right. So that's what was issuance of letter of intent, leases, commercial lots, all that. Got it. Dual purpose, so. Uh, I have to go back to the minutes, I think of the May minute, the May. I think it might have been Mike, you and I that were going to look at that. I can go back to the May minutes yeah. and check and we'll try and get on that for August. And yeah, I, I sent an email. Mike, I might not have had you on it, but I'll forward it to you. I, um, I mean, there's really some seminal documents that pre submission consultation form, the Marine Al Agriculture Permitting in Connecticut documents. Joint agency application documents and uh, those really seem to be the three that the state level um, that really are the most helpful documents for people that have an interest that you know, we might want to look at and then just in addition our own policies for uh, commercial shell fishing. 
So I'd be happy if we want to find some time between now and August, Ed, um, to have a conversation with you, me, and Mike. Right. So is that formal now? Do we have to make that a, a, a vote that we have a subcommittee? Yes, we did that. I think it was a May meeting we did that. Okay, good. I just have to look at the minutes and see exactly who it was. Great. Okay. Uh, see other, I'll put his new business. I am going to go check with somehow with the town or somebody else, find out about that parking area because originally that parking area was in the same situation as it is now. And it didn't cost the town any money out of the general fund. They were able to negotiate for those spots and you never know. So why not try it? So yeah. I'm looking to that. And it should, it should be clearly delineated as to where you know where public parking stops and starts. So you know if we can get yeah. them to put like there is a sort of marker. Yeah, there is a fence. In the okay, as long as it's as long as that's there, I don't. I'm not that familiar with the, the exact location. So as long as it's marked off. Okay. And I know the past commission people that worked on that and got that to fruition. Good. Um, I would like to say maybe we should make some sort of concerted effort to start soliciting new members. Um, we've had vacancies since February, I think it is. Um, so in the past, I've seen other commissions have had ads in the newspaper or maybe something on our Facebook page or some way to sort of try and find people. We have sort of just kind of been hoping that somebody would show up, I think, and then, you know, hope you know to find a a guy, but we need to put it out there in some sort of better public view that we need people. So there was one possibility. Uh, they were, Mr. Hoey was trying to look into, uh, everybody's always kind of assumed that you have to be a registered voter, but there can be a, a long-term residency who's paying property taxes, but is not a US citizen. And the feeling was they should be able to be a commission member. And Mr. Howie was supposed to be checking with the town council on that because we have a candidate that would be willing and interested. He's joined our meetings as public a couple times. Okay. So that is being looked at. It's whether it's actually necessarily voter registration or if it's a taxpayer in the town is eligible. And maybe All something right. is wrong with that. So I will follow that up is, on that. Yeah, it's something that needs to be clarified. All right, so do we want to maybe put an ad in the Guilford Courier to say, you know, commissioners needed or whatever? I know that, like I said, it's been done in the past. Do we want to try and do that or we want to sort of see how it shakes out with the- uh, give it one month. The, can we give it one month for it to follow up and see if we can work with that candidate and- Sure. For, yeah, I mean, if it's who I think it is, and it's John, he'd be yeah. great. Love to have him. He's willing, and Mr. Howie is willing to have it and look into it and see what could be done to make that happen. Yeah, he'd be an awesome. And actually, I have another guy in, in mind. I don't know if he's willing, but there's another guy that I'm going to ask in the next couple of days when, if I run into him. Okay. Has anyone talked to Don Kowalski? Intermittently. I haven't yeah. seen him. His boat is next to mine, but I haven't seen him at the dock. He went fishing today, I guess, or was supposed to. Well, we could just ask because he could come back at this point because that whole Republican Democrat, you know, restriction has been waived. I think he went and got. I think he's on another commission now. Oh, he is. Yeah, I think so. I think he might be Marina or something, possibly. Okay. He's kind of hard to track down sometimes. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's not that's not the greatest attribute in, in a commissioner. We need to be able to find the guy. Right. Okay, does anybody ever else have new business? Um, I just have some time. Oh, what do we know about going back to in-person meetings? I had actually asked on that a few months ago and didn't follow up. My my understanding is that it's per, permitted now. And in fact, the um, Selectman's conference room is video enabled as a Zoom room, a native Zoom room, so we can make the meetings hybrid. Uh, 
So I, if you would like, I'll follow up on that. So potentially for the August meeting, if we're allowed, those that want to attend live, we will we'll go back to having the meeting at the uh, Selectman's Conference Room, uh, but also keep the Zoom link open for those that want to be remote or the public. Okay. So I'll, people, run with, I'll run with that. What do people think? Do you want to do it remote or they want to back in person? I I'm like fine being, being in person. I, you know, Bob, I think person was, you have, have it both ways. Some, some days you might want to do Zoom, you know, if you get busy. Yep. You could, All oh, we might want to... going forward would be hybrid, John, to your point. Though, yeah. you know, we, we would have the ability to be in the conference room, but also some participants and public could either come yeah. in remote or in person. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for looking into that. Yep. Mm. John, I love your long hair. Where is he? Thank you. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> Okay, on that, item 10. Item 10. A, mo a motion for adjournment. That was Bob Berger. I second John Hall. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. everybody.